Okay, this is kind of crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I have a very long slideshow about gaming on Manjaro. Uh, I did not know that, uh, I, I didn't know until I already offered to do the speech that Chris had actually done gaming on Arch uh, for Plug three years ago. Uh, uh, so yeah. who in this room has seen that, has seen that presentation? Mm -hmm. Keith? And uh, JP and obviously Chris gave it. So we have four people who didn't see it. Is anybody else here three years old? So there's a rather short statute of limitations. Yeah. You know, so right. and you know things change a lot in three years. And so um, I guess I always like to read the room before I, I give a presentation. So this this presentation is intended as a first draft. Uh, I had the idea, I talked to, I, I'm a ham, ham radio guy like a lot of these guys here, and someone who doesn't come to Plug Life, I haven't seen him here. So the talk Jim, was 2015? Yeah, it was 2015. I saw after I told, told Walt I would do oh, this talk. Oh, so, um, yeah, Quite all right. Again, things have changed a little bit in the last few years, but uh, since Chris gave, gave this talk, there's some new stuff. The other thing is, is, Chris, how much in your talk did you actually talk about like installing and setting up Arch? You know? Well, that's a that's a that's a talk. That's that's a talk in and of itself. So, so, so I've, I've kind of yeah. made this to be like two, almost three talks put together because I almost intended okay. this with the idea of when I talked with Jim Fisher, who is I know him from amateur radio, like a lot of guys here do. Mm -hmm. He said, "Hey, we really need people to give speeches at Foscon. I need you to come up with some ideas for stuff that can be presented at Foscon, which that's free and open source software convention in in West Philly every, I believe it's August. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if they actually had submissions for talks open up yet or not, but um, I don't. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't think Jonathan has opened them up yet." Yeah. If he if he did, he would have told us already. So so, but I know that he I know that they a lot of times have like when he opens them up, it's kind of like a soft opening up. Like he'll tell people that he knows or people who've previously given talks. You can always you can always email to him. Yeah. Well, yeah. before I send him anything, that's why I'm doing this in the front of plug, so you can tell me if this is hot garbage or if it's actually. I mean, you know, ready you know, to go in front of F Foscon. Having so, already done it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but did you do it at Foscon? I think it's a little. I talked on. I talked about LVM at Foscon. So LVM. Well, that is a very good topic, and uh, uh, I, I might even mention LVM in this uh, very briefly. Awesome. Um, yeah, dude. So we're listening. So as far as so so this is a so this is a first draft. If you see stuff that I tried my best to do error checking, I really wanted to talk to you guys about. All the cool DRM and Fusion and DSTAR, but I willingly held back all weekend long, <laughs> revising and re revising and checking everything. I still wanted to get in and talk to you guys about all this stuff. Oh, you can do it now. We've got the uh, we've got the Fusion and talk. I got, doing what talk yeah, about. The next hour is mine. <laughs> there you go. go. So we're not, <laughs> I mean, we're not going to be. Yeah, so, it's all you. Yeah, so, so if you guys see stuff that's like blatantly wrong, blatantly wrong I try to be very non biased in this presentation. It's It's difficult, and I got to move because I have an hour to get through, I believe, 32, 33, 30 some slides, 30 plus slides. I'm all over the place. We promise not to heckle you. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, if I were repeat on that controller. What's that? <laughs> well, <laughs> turn on the turbo button. Yeah, turn on the, yeah, we got to, yeah, we'll push the turbo, push the turbo button and make the presentation go faster. I'm going to try and make sure that the the room doesn't fall asleep, and I'll do the best I, think I can. More buttons on that control. Yeah. So we have a couple different things going on here. Pay no attention. This is how I'm controlling the presentation. Um, again, I like to read the room. So I think most people here are are pretty decent level of experience with Linux. We got you know published authors here. We got people who've been using Linux for decades. Who here has built their own? Who here has not built their own computer from a bucket of spare parts? Has anyone here never done that? Define parts. Okay. <laughs> Define parts. Have you have you ever bought just a, a box, a, a, a metal box, and a motherboard, and a CPU, and RAM chips, and a hard drive? It, if you haven't done that, you know, has anyone not done that? We got anyone here? He's got some some couple people Everybody's here. Done that. Everybody, well, everybody in this room has done that. But I feel like if I gave this talk at Foscon, I think there might be some curious newer people. So I'm targeting this to eventually go in front of Foscon. 
There's going to be some parts here that I'm going to fly past because I think everybody in this room knows it. So when I talk about going to the Manjaro website and downloading an ISO image and making a boot USB, I think everybody has everybody in this room done that. Everybody in this room has done that. So even though it's a lot of slides, I'm going to really fly through a couple past couple of them so that we can get to so that we can get to stuff that may actually. Of course, you realize that somebody hadn't done that after that intro. They'd be ashamed to admit it. So. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, again, I really feel like if, if this were to go in front of a larger audience, especially you know in a big in a large public location, I think that you're going to get people who are not real you know diehards like this like you, this group in this. You room. may want to like I think your approach like I do a similar thing. You read the room and you might just want to like adjust things like have like. Maybe some extra even slides. Like, even if I, even if they do accept us for FOSCON and I get to go in front of them, go the for world. at least fifty-five slides. Go for. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I talk about myself really quick. And, and been, don't make them so light. Just, just spell it out. Well, well you're going to get hit with like wall of text because I spent a lot of time writing this, and I can, I will take your feedback at the end of this. So I live here locally in Chester County. I've been using Linux and Unix. For over 20 years, uh, I used to use Red Hat before Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Mandrake, Ubuntu, Mint, well, last year I messed around with Solus, and most recently I've been doing a lot of Manjaro. I live in Chester County, I do ham radio, I like a lot of beat up old computers that I play games. I know we probably have some gamers in here who want to play the newest and greatest stuff. I like old and busted games, just because. Should we arrange um, that you were saying beat up while you were circling your wife on there? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. All right, you stop right now. I gotta get past the slide. Okay, so if you're an advanced elite Linux user like this whole room, please be patient. I'll get the stuff that's actually interesting to you eventually after I get through a whole bunch of slides of text. Um, so why game on Linux at all? That's a big question. Uh, people, uh, the outs inside this room, everybody knows why to, why to game on Linux. Outside this room, people are like, why would I want to game on Linux? I have I have PlayStation. Why why do you know, actually? I don't think that's clear. I, I don't like I'm I'm I don't game at all. And I'm I've been to say you don't game at all. I don't game at all because because yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be I want to be a perfectionist. You do work. You do work. Yeah, actually, yeah, you gotta like kill to eat. But besides yeah. that, I just don't. It's never been alluring to know. You know, like I stopped in like the early '90s game. Okay, so I grew up like my, my dad bought an Atari. I grew up gaming. My dad bought an Atari 2600 when I was in diapers. You know, so mm -hmm. it's been with me my whole entire life. And I played Pong. You know, played Pong. So some of us has been with us our whole life. It's, I think it's a, a generational thing. It maybe starts with Absolutely. Generation X older. and Millennials. <laughs> and if you're not Gen X Millennial, if you're before that, if you're Boomer or or you're you almost know, old enough to use ham radio. I am almost. <laughs> I am, I'm, on the I'm on the board. When I grew up. I was in diapers playing Atari, and my dad's my dad's friend had a CB in his car. So I'm like right at the transition. Yeah, you're right there. So I like I like all of it, right? But well, okay, no, so, considering there are five year olds with ham radio licenses, though. Are there? Yeah, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah no, no, most of them are still, we're, are now 80. That's the yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> we have to stop talking about it. And then looking down, the five year olds like we're This is this. being recorded. We have to stop talking about it. Absolutely. Him, right? Okay. <laughs> so, for many years, I would say the conventional view of Linux outside this community has been that it's a server. Linux is a server OS, right? But it's mediocre as a desktop OS for reasons I'm not going to get into them. Everybody knows in this room. I'm not going to. So, Yes, I do still have a Windows PC for gaming, only for gaming. That's the only reason I use Windows for any reason whatsoever these days is games that will absolutely, under any circumstances, refuse to refuse to run uh, on Linux. And I have a question about that. Yes. With Lutris, have you actually run into a game that doesn't that refuses to run? Okay, I, have, I just I I specifically started using Lutris while writing this presentation. What, what's what's it called? Lutris? Okay, so that's later in the presentation. Okay, so we need to we need to. Okay. Okay. That was a preemptive question. Yeah, yeah. So so it's a preemptive question, and it, it's something again. I'll get into it okay. at the end. So what do I keep trying to game on Linux if I have stuff that runs only runs only on Windows? Well. First, we have the free as in free as in beer argument. You have to pay to install Linux on a PC. If you buy Windows 10 as a re retail SKU license, it's hundred dollars. If you get a, a, a PC with it pre-installed, you're paying the quote unquote Microsoft tax. You're not actually paying hundred dollars. You're paying like fifty dollars or twenty dollars, whatever they charge. Okay. If you put together a PC yourself out of out of parts that you buy off the shelf, 
You don't have to spend money on a, re a retail Windows license. Um, and you know, you could all, and, and so that's one of the things that attracts people in the general public if they get some sort of beat up PC that's several years old with the hard drive removed, they can buy a new hard drive and they want to install something on it. They don't have any money. They're not going to be paying $100 for a retail Windows disk. They want something that they want something that they can install for free and get up and running. So even though in this room, free as in beer, it's kind of like, wow, that's so like 1998. Outside the general public, it's still something that gets people interested in, in, in Linux for just for starters. What would you do with your old PC that you got? Well, one of the things you can install some games on it. Okay, why else game on Linux? Well, if you, have, if you do cough up the money and buy that Windows 10 uh, uh, activation key, and then you change your hardware, um, they have Windows activation. A lot of you have run into this in, this in this room if you still use Windows. People who have not been on Windows for a while, they, they started it in, I want to say they started it in XP. Yep. And it escalated a great deal under Windows 7, although it's really ramped up with Windows 10. They keep on every successive newer version of Windows, they get more and more strict about it. Um, you can get away with it a few times for free. They ask you to reactivate. There's an online prompt to do it. Eventually, they, the online prompt will disappear and they'll give you a number that you have to call. You can call that number a few times and you say, hey, this key is not working. Can you, can you re-enable re this through Windows activation? They'll do that a few times. I've heard as, as many as seven or eight times. I've heard as few as two or, two or three times. We don't, really don't know. It's almost like a roll of the dice. Eventually, Microsoft, there are cases. I've, I've heard of them. I don't know anyone personally who's done it, but I've read online in some forums. Eventually, they say, no, you know, we think that this key has been abused. This seems like a pirated key. Sorry, you got to buy it. you got to buy a new license. So $100, $100 only $100 until it's not. Another really big reason why I'm getting away from gaming on Linux is window, Windows Update. Okay, Windows Update is slow. It's buggy. Sometimes it just flat out doesn't run on my PCs. Okay, it, my biggest annoyance with it is that it breaks support for some legacy peripherals. I have some ergonomic keyboards and like Wacom drawing tablets. They're older than 10 years, and the, and the manufacturer has not released updated driver software. Uh, a lot of times you can just run Windows Update, and all of a sudden your peripherals that you spent good money on a few years ago just flat out don't work anymore. And I'm like, hey, man, this thing is broken. Do I need to throw it in the trash? No, I plug it into a, I plug it into a Linux machine, and it works fine. So there's been Windows updates. I've had two of them now. And I remember, from, I remember 1804 being specifically terrible. Breaking, a key, breaking one of my ergonomic keyboards. And it really made me mad. I'm like, I really need to stop gaming on, on Linux and start doing, uh, we really need to stop gaming on Windows and do more on, do more on Linux. Um, you could turn off Windows Update and still use your old peripherals, but then, you know, enjoy your, enjoy your Trojans uh, or worms or whatever is going around the beast. Enjoy your malware um, if you turn off Windows Update because they always have new vulnerabilities pretty much. I mean, Linux has them too, just, just, Windows it seems seems to get more of them. So again, why game on Linux at all? Well, it's still PC gaming. So I mean, you have to acknowledge that consoles exist in this presentation. This isn't just Linux versus Windows. This is Linux versus consoles. Uh, so I'm going to mention it here briefly. Again, even setting aside the hassles with Windows, you can still, with activation, you can still do a certain amount of upgrades on your hardware. And that's always been one of the main advantages that PC gaming has always had in general over console gaming. That's not changing any anytime soon. It will probably change eventually. I'll get toward, to that about that towards the end. But for now, being able to upgrade your own hardware is always has always been one of the big lures of PC gaming. And again, why game on Linux? Oh, well, it's fun. I mean, once you get your machine built and get everything set up and configured, uh, there actually is a really good selection of games to choose from. And it's a good way to have fun and promote the operating system to newcomers who don't know a lot about Linux. They're like, Linux, is that, that's that server OS. That's what I have my uh, blog running on. No, you can do a lot more than, more than just host your website on Linux. You can actually have fun on it. So general classification of Linux is just a slide. I'm just going to go in. Everybody knows these three classifications in this room. I'll go really quick. There's GPL, open source, free stuff that is built on Linux. There's two games that I really, really like. I like, really like Zonotic, which is like a Quake-like online shooter. Uh, and then Battle for Wesnoth, which is a turn-based turn-based strategy game. 
those are two of the best ones. A lot of other people like Tux Racer, which is kind of like shitty Mario Kart. But I, uh, I some of them, re- some of the games really, really stand out. And then of course a lot of the really like historic, historic games like NetHack um, and, and so forth. But those, you know, those those will run. You can play those through an SSH session. You don't know, actually need to build a gaming rig to play NetHack. It, you know, Zonotic and Westmouth would be examples of best of breed GPL games. Then there are closed source games, which is, I'm focusing maybe a little bit more on that in this presentation, because a lot of my favorite genre of games, uh, we call it Metroidvania. You, some of you who got here really early saw me playing some Dead Cells, uh, Hollow Knight, and Slendered. Uh, they're available on a plethora of platforms all across the board, Windows, Linux, Switch, PS4, all the, all the current things, but I like to play them on Linux is for, for various reasons, Dead Cells, is uh, I, I specifically bought it on Linux just because the developers are like French anarchists, and I thought, well, you know, we might as well play, you know, play play an anarchist game on an anarchist operating system. But a lot of other a lot of other games like Valve, which we're going to get into big time later in this presentation, with all the uh, Source Engine Orange Box games like Half Life Two, Bioware actually released Neverwinter Nights, the first one in like 2006, 2007 ish. Uh, the first one, which is a, a flat-out Dungeons and Dragons rule for, fourth edition uh, uh, role, role-playing game, action role-playing game. Third, uh, third. Ah, uh, you might, you might. Be right. It might be three point five. Yeah. I don't well, know what it's it's third. Yeah, I think fourth. Ed- I, I. It's been so long. Pre fourth. So long. It's pre fourth, but it is the actual implementation of Dungeons and Dragons in computer form. Bioware released it. Native, a native version for Linux, um, and uh, I, I have no idea whether it still runs. Which um, game is this? Neverwinter Nights, the first one oh, right. from, like, from, two from like 12, 13, 14 years ago. Um, Borderlands 2, some really, really good uh, turn based strategy games like Crusader Kings 2 and Age of Wonders 3, really good. So, closed source games that run natively on Linux is kind of the sweet spot these days. GPL stuff is still out there, and by all means, if you, if you are a GPL purist, you, you can have a lot of fun. Some of these games are fantastic. Last, I will touch on, and I don't want to focus on because it's a bit controversial, but closed source games that have not been ported to Linux but can still be made to run, all your AAA stuff, Blizzard, Bethesda, <coughs> all the other ones and more, I will mention it. You've already heard Chris mention it a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the history of gaming on Linux, just because people are like, is this, this gaming on Linux? Is this a new thing? No, it's not. It's been around as long as EOS has existed. Way too much to cover in this presentation, so I'm just going to do three slides. Three slides only. There's always been free and open source games available for Linux, but mainstream, closed source, mass market gaming on the Linux, the new Linux OS is a much more recent, as in this decade, phenomenon. Aside from that rare, very rare cases like Neverwinter Nights, that was one of the few ones I could find out. And then again, mass market, because there were attempts before. The biggest attempt was made in the late 90s, early 2000s by companies like Loki. Uh, however, they failed. They, it, Linux was just not popular enough at the time. There was a lot of criticism that they were porting the games like two, three years after they came out and so on and so forth. They folded, they went out of business along with a whole bunch of other companies in like 01. <coughs> and then gaming on Linux, I consider it to be a bit of a dark age of sorts. Other people in this room may disagree, but for about 10 years, PC gaming was totally ruled by the Microsoft DirectX Windows API. Mm-hmm. Again, people in this room could, could debate that, but I, I, I lived through it and it was pretty much o- OpenGL, which I believe predates DirectX. They tried to they tried to get, keep stuff running on it, but DirectX pretty much ruled PC gaming from I want to say 2002 to about 2012. It it dominated. Uh, the only way that you could play any new PC games on Linux, again with very rare exceptions like Neverwinter Nights, was by using Wine. Uh, however, around I say beginning around 10 years ago, maybe I should edit that to be seven years ago because 20, 2012. You really started seeing a lot of mobile devices like the iPhone and Android phones. They started breaking Direct DirectX's stranglehold because um, they had to use, to get games running on those mobile platforms. We started seeing some tools arise like Unity 3D, 
which is a game develop game. It's, it's it's an engine, but it's also a game development tool set. Um, which uh, I believe it originated with Apple and then has gradually spread to a whole bunch of other platforms. Again, on the console side, all the, all the major consoles, PlayStation, Switch, uh, even Xbox, and now it was also moving over to, uh, it moved over to Linux a few years ago. And then even more recently, the Vulkan API, which is a new API, which seems to be a replacement for OpenGL, uh, which has a lot more features, and is specifically uh, designed to be a cross-platform API for game, de game development. Um, and uh, again, it's, it's more popular on Linux and mobile, but if it's, if it's written in the Vulkan API, it runs on everything, and that includes Windows. Okay, so um, here's some uh, Linux game ports. This is not my photo. This was just off of Reddit somewhere. We got some really, really good games here, man. SimCity 3000, man, I played, that, played the hell out of that game. Yeah, a few that weren't so high. I don't know, like Descent 3, we got Ultimate Solitaire. Here we go, Quake Arena, that's a good one. They, there was a good, Civilization Call of War, I don't know, was some sort of spin off game. They had some good ones, though. I actually have somewhere in the basement, I haven't been able to find it, I actually have Myth 2 Soul Blighter. Um, I actually got the Loki version of that. That was Bungie, that was what, that was what Bungie was doing before Halo. Um, little, known, little known milestone for Bungie. Um, anyway, last thing on the history of gaming, as pretty much everyone, in, uh, most people in this room know, Valve released SteamOS in 2013 that was based on Debian, GNU Linux, uh, and Steambox. They tried to make a substitute console. They tried to have a living room gaming platform to compete with Xbox and PlayStation. They called it the Steambox. It was PC, commodity PC hardware running SteamOS which was, again, their very heavily modified Debian distro. And by themselves, through the sheer power of Gabe Newell, the Valve CEO, his cult, cult following, he immediately, overnight, spawned a large proliferation, proliferation of cutting-edge games on Linux. I, I really, I'm trying not to exaggerate here, but it went from basically nothing to I want to say, at the, the day Steambox came out, or a couple weeks before Steambox came out, there were something like three dozen, three dozen AAA games came into existence, including all, all of Valve's entire catalog, Half-Life Portal, Left 4 Dead, uh, along, with, uh, along with many of Borderlands 2 was not uh, a Valve game, but they all, they needed to launch, and uh, they needed to launch the Steambox. Well, they, they gave it their best shot, and they got a lot of publicity and a lot of press. However, it was a commercial failure. Uh, and uh, I believe the last manufacturer was Alienware. I believe their, the last brand new Steambox was built maybe two or three years ago. Uh, and that slowed the growth of gaming on Linux. There's fewer AAA games. Uh, however, I don't think they're ever going to be as bad as, as things will ever get back to as bad as they were 15 years ago. We've come too far. There are too many mobile games that are running on Unity and or Vulcan, or Vulcan um, to make games easy, much easier to port than when DirectX had a stranglehold on PC game development. I, I'm just going to ask, so, <clears throat> so what comes to mind for me is this concept of uh, that sort of the monolithic company sort of driving everything and you don't like it but it's the momentum so everybody just gets along, you know, you got to get along and come along and yeah, I'm not right. saying that right but is this, do you see this as one of the cases where the, the sort of the organic growth that led to the fragmentation, if you will, really did move things ahead because it seemed to me, the Steambox is the first time I wanted to maybe get back into gaming. Right. Did, besides a commercial failure, which, you know, it, it, that is what it is in that sense, but what did it actually do? For, was that the turning point, or, or like the definitive? It was point? a turning point for me as a gamer on Linux. It made me think that gaming on Linux was was not just running stuff in Wine, because for me, Wine Wine was cool and it, could, it did some interesting things. But it was also it, it and it's still a viable thing. But it was it, it, this is this is a turnkey solution. I, again, right. not to use an industry buzzword, but this is a box that you plug into your TV that runs that, that runs Linux and it runs. It, it just works. It just works. And Steam, and then what they did is they came out with a release of Steam for Linux, 
where you just install Steam on a Linux box and you, it has the exact same GUI as Steam on Windows and all, and, and, it, and it, it's sort of a little light to me to say, oh, this is, this is, this is actually viable. This is actually and all your viable. licenses are shared. So and that's bought, the other thing is, so you, you buy a game, on Windows, so you got it on Windows. it's DRM, oh. it's DRM, so you, it is still digital rights management, yeah. so you buy a game for Steam on Windows, right. if there is a Linux port of it, you don't have to buy it a second time. Oh, so it's the same. Oh, it's so the that's... same. It's the same license. Your license is from Valve. Your license is not tied to a piece of hardware. Your license is tied to the company. or the OS, right? And right. again, that goes against open source, you know, philosophy. But in, in terms of just using the just using the OS to play games that I already own, mm -hmm. it's it was it was pretty much a done deal for me. Now again, I have you know hundreds of games in my library. Only about half of them are officially supported. Are officially supported. Again, there are, are ways around that's fifty percent, that. though. You said. Yeah, and that's, they just work. I mean, you they just work. Steam, they they just work. play, yeah. and well, that was that's what yeah, that's what off. sort of made sense to me because then I could go. I mean, I was going to get a Steam box, but again, it's like I just my brain's just not there. I'm not. I don't have the time for it. But I thought that was cool. That that's dual. Like you could get a box, plug it in, and it will work. There's right. no. You and know. for for the other ones, you can do the whole screencast thing. I wouldn't call that gaming on Linux, but you can. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can from. stream. You can stream. Oh, really? okay. You can stream from a Windows box to Linux, uh, okay. which I, I have five gig Ethernet in, in uh, five gig Wi-Fi in my mm -hmm. house. Not everyone, yeah, not does. everyone does. And you'll still get frame drops. It's still. I mean, I, I, Rich might have better results with it. Are you hardwired? I, I run on wired. You run on wired. And okay. I'll tell you, it, it's you, you know. You're I'm sure it's 60 hertz, but you know, and everything better if you run it native. But it's soft. You know, you sit it's, across the living it's, room. It's, it's plenty good for me. It's yeah. good. So, so getting back to the slide, the slides, and I hope that partly we can we can address it more. I want to get through some more slides here. Um, I don't think it's ever going to be as bad as it used to be again. There, other things are going to change and will be different. This 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 slideshow will be totally obsolete in. in mm -hmm two, maybe even one year from now, but things will never be as bad as they were not, I don't think, within within this decade. Certainly not within the two to five year life cycle of any new gaming PC or likely to build today. Those people who like to live on live on the edge will get two years out of a gaming PC. People like me, with a lot of my games, I play slower games because I'm old, so I can get five years out of out of a gaming PC. So I think there are very low risks of platform adoption for gaming on Linux. So I'm going to get started, and I'm going to show you the build of this actual machine right here, uh, which I built with all off-the-shelf hardware uh, about it is in September. So I've had this for about um, not quite like eight months now. So. Let's assess the use case. Why did I build this particular box? Now, again, this is just my use case. Your requirements will be totally different. I already have a high-end power tower PC for keyboard and mouse style FPS gaming. So I wanted a PC for lighter gaming. Um, I have, want something with lower hardware specs, and I want to use it as a console substitute. I want a Steam box, but they stopped making Steam boxes. So I want a box that is mainly for running Steam, but if I want to do other stuff with it, I want to do some stuff with, do some other, do some, do some other types of gaming as well, uh, I want to do that. But I basically wanted a Steam box for the living room. So what were the requirements? Well, the Steam boxes, you know, they, they, they were a little bit pricey. I want, to be, I want it to be cheaper than a Steam box. I don't want to spend more than $500. It must be small. It must fit in my living room entertainment center. It must be silent. Well, quieter than my PlayStation 4, which is the loudest console that I own, which sounds about it sounds, has a it has a fan and it sounds like a laptop when it's really when it's really rolling. Uh, I want something semi-portable. This has a big old handle on the side of it, which let me lug it here tonight and do dem demos on it. You know, maybe I'm not actually 40 years old and I still go to hang out at LAN parties. You know, so <laughs> I can go back and and do that sometime, right? People still do. Do people still do those? I don't know. I think they do. They might. They do. You know. Um, so I, w I at least want it to be semi-portable, though. And then upgradable. Now, you'll see what, when, when I show you the photos in a little bit. I wanted this to be very easy to upgrade um, to in order to get five years out of it instead of two years. So you'll see in the picture exactly what I mean in a couple slides. So this is what my living Now, this looks terrible, and this might be my camera. Um, so this is my flat screen TV. I do not have a large house. 
Um, so this is like I think 40, a 44 inch, 42 or 44 inch that we got Nintendo Switch here, and then you can't see any of this unfortunately because of the uh, the I, I might I might need to edit that. I was not expecting it to turn out like that. Everything but your box. PS4. Down here we have an old Nintendo uh, Wii U, and then down at the bottom you can't see it. That's where this race. That's where this is. So it has to fit in the entertainment center. And it has to be. It has to be new requirement. Short and flat. Case must be white. <laughs> no. uh, you know, maybe I'll put like a white. New rule. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's anyway. It won't show we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to redo that if, if this go, if this presentation goes out again in front of people. We'll have to redo that picture. I was not expecting that. But you know, it's 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 a it's a it's a tidy setup. I like I like it's tidy. for the heckler. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so here's the bill of materials for this. Uh, again, you got to be under five hundred dollars. So here's where I get. Here's where I go on a little soapbox about. Um, You're making key you right right now. Right 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 vendor say. neutrality. Vendor <laughs> neutrality. I'm not going to get into the AMD versus Intel versus Nvidia wars. Uh, I'm going to say it now. I'm going to say it again on a slide in like 10 slides from now. AMD GPU is pretty good though for budget. AMD for right now, AMD is continues to be the price per, per dollar performance leader. And my big tower, my big tower gaming PC has an Intel Core i7. I have nothing against Intel whatsoever. It's a big ass Core i7 with a big ass NVIDIA. GPU, and that is your best of best of breed solution for high end gaming. This is single monitor, 1080p, uh, casual casual gaming for elite elite specs. This is not the CPU you want, but 80 bucks, and it has a CPU and it has Radeon Vega in it. 512 512 shader units, which I have no idea what that means, but it's it's not as powerful as. You know, real premium stuff mm -hmm. like two two years ago. It's very oh, yeah. mm -hmm. powerful for what it is for eighty dollars. Motherboard is the very amusingly named ASRock uh, ITX, which is the very smallest commodity mother bare motherboard you can get for eighty five dollars. This has since risen. This was a very hot seller, and it's very difficult to find now. And it seems to be up above hundred bucks now. RAM, eight gigabytes of DDR four. Not enough. I uh, yeah. immediately upgraded that to 16. However, just to get off the ground and get up and running, there was a DDR4 shortage last year, and there was price fixing by overseas cartels when I built this. Uh, oh. Since then, the price of DDR has dropped by yeah. over half. Yeah, it's dropped. It's really? Really? And yeah. yes, so yeah. it went. So what was $85 in September of last year is now 40. So it's I said, ridiculous. Yeah. So 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 now so they it dropped by over half because somehow the cartel was busted. Uh, so I immediately when that happened, I immediately went and upgraded from eight to sixteen. So it's now sixteen gigs, which is really for a medium range. I, eight eight was a little bit on the low side, so I'm much happier with sixteen. My um, minimum is eight now. What's that? My minimum. Is eight. Yeah. Well, that was my minimum too. So again, this was bare bare minimum. I would not go below eight. Um, for storage, okay, so um, mechanical drives are done, totally done -zo. and then SATA drives, even SATA is not what it used to be. So we're doing an NVMe, and we're doing M2 drives, 250 gigabytes for $50. It is literally the exact same size as a stick of yep. extra chewing gum. Mm -hmm. uh, this continues to drop like a rock. I believe you can probably get, um, you can I believe you can get, yeah, you can get, yeah, well, off Just low, low-end low brand. brands. Yeah, low-end brands. I want right. good brands. Yeah. I want King, Kingston yeah. is, even Kingston is, I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, they're not what they were. I would, even though I considered AMD for the processor, I seriously considered Intel for the NVMe mm -hmm. Drive or crucial, ridiculously good, uh, but they wanted at the time. I think they wanted like eighty dollars for, and Kingston was only a slight drop off in performance for thirty dollars saving. Case this is the Silverstone small form factor set top box style case for ninety dollars, and the power no power supply included. I bought the three hundred watts small form factor. Yeah, you can't put any old power supply. You have to get their super special puny 
300 watt for $60. This was actually quite an expenditure. It was the only way I could get it to fit in the entertainment machine. I did not want to have a tower PC sitting on the floor next to the entertainment center. That just looks janky. I wanted, yeah, plus, it's invisible. The lights are out. Plus, I wanted <laughs> stealth. It's got to be stealth -ish. That's right. So, just a quick question. That 300 watts, that's not too low? I would have This thought. doesn't have a graphics card in it. Yeah, oh, that's right. No, yeah, the, right. It's built into the, right. it's in the CPU. That's a good point. And yeah. AMD, this thing, I, I, plugged, I have a kilowatt at home, so we have mm -hmm. a bunch yeah. of electricity. People who know how electricity works in this room. Mm -hmm. I plugged a kilowatt, even running under full load, the thing with the whole, the, the whole computer was pulling about 110 watts. So, yeah. wow. AMD, you know, and, and that's also no mechanical drives. It's just a stick of NVMe, so the drive, yeah. the volt, the watts going into the hard yeah, drive yeah. are. Yeah. are no, but without yeah, the, the AMD the, figured out how to make a CPU finding without shorting the twelve volt lead. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's I, <laughs> AMD's been figuring out a lot of things. Rich, honestly, this is already that. obsolete. They're coming out with the new one yep. is in six weeks, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a further AMD. further dimension over this. So, four hundred fifty dollars eight months ago, four hundred dollars today. Yeah, I know that's still more than a PS four. Or an Xbox One, but the specs on this, I mean, you, I think, I feel like you, we can get a lot of life out of it, and it plays, honestly, it plays games that those games don't play. I mean, plus, you can upgrade it, though. Plus I mean, that's, upgrade, yeah. Plus, it's upgradable. Right. So, upgrade considerations, obviously, now I've already mentioned a lot of this stuff. New CPU, uh, more RAM already mentioned, bigger, a bigger uh, M M2 drive. Um, I purposely bought too large of a case because I want to be able to add this Greek graphics down the line if, I, if, I, if, if necessary or, or if I just feel like it. Um, and it also provides uh, space in here for uh, two and a half inch drives. Um, so I do have to be mindful of power requirements, exactly as said, 300 watts. You know, it, I might limit me to mid-range cards, but by the time I'm ready to add one in a couple years, even mid-range cards are going to be way more powerful than they are today. So I, I thought about this. I thought about everything when I built this. However, there here are some things I, I ruled out. So when you build a, when you build a gaming rig these days in this at this price point, <clears throat> you can build it for three hundred instead of four fifty by recycling a case. You get a case, find something someone has that on the curb, take their old Pentium four out, put that in, and you know re reuse the power supply. Okay, probably USB 1, maybe USB 2, and any USB 3 ports might not work. Um, Bluetooth? I don't know. What's Bluetooth? You know, like, there are certain things that you sacrifice, but I could have saved $150 and just, just had the bare processor storage and RAM for just $300. Okay, also, ASRock, the makers of the motherboard, will sell you an entire case with, with a similar... Uh, lower specification, but same size motherboard. So like, you can't overclock, and it doesn't have uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built into it. But it's a it's a miniature. I mean, the, the whole thing together is you know about the size of you know like a like a, a snap a photo snapshot. You know, it's the size of like a loaf of like a loaf of bread or like a big sandwich, and you could do that for th for three seventy five. It doesn't even have a power supply. And it has a wall work like a laptop. So it doesn't even have its own power supply in the case it's that tiny. Uh, but you will never ever be able to add discrete graphics to it because it is so tiny. So if I ever want to add graphics to it, um, but you know, it's if you were really strapped for space, it would it would have been an it would have been an option. Steep link. Yeah, it, it's about that it's about that size, super super small. Um, and it, but you know, again, I was a little annoyed too that it didn't have networking. I would have had to buy like some sort of like put a USB dongle in it for networking and stuff like that, which. Would be uh, I'm reusing all this stuff, US, uh, Bluetooth wireless, uh, keyboard, mouse, mouse emulation on the touchpad um, as, I, as I immediately mess up the slide here. The controller has more buttons on it than an HP calculator. Well, yeah, but it's, it's a keyboard and mouse in something the size of a game controller, right? This is just, this is just a cat. Dude, don't look at the keys on this. this is just a cat. Um, so there's a flat screen TV, HDMI cable. All right, moving on. Final assembly is going to be, everyone's done this, going right past this. I got Do you some actually use an anti-static restro? Um, you know what, with this, when something's brand new and, and RAM is like, you know, 80 bucks a stick, I'll still sure. use it. If it's something that I picked up for the on e-waste recycling day, hell no. 
you know. But this is actually kind of a nice. This is actually kind of nice, nice gear. So I did put it on just this, just this one time. You know, sort of like for good luck. Um, I can't remember the. I, I fried. I fried motherboards with static. Mm -hmm. but, but, I, uh, I fried a Celeron processor. Yeah. Yeah. Once. It's, it's the big case for ITX. So this is I. This is the I, This is the motherboard. This is the whole system. Mm -hmm. That's the whole system. So ASRock makes their small form factor. The whole thing fits in there. This is the power supply. This is wasted space that has wires so in it. Rate six on. <laughs> and then this is you can put legacy uh, two and a half inch drives in here. And then underneath this whole side here is where you put if you want to add discrete graphics. You got your PCIe slot. And then there's a ribbon cable that comes with the case. The ribbon cable goes through the side. And discrete graphics are underneath here, so you can put a big hot game card in there uh, if you wanted to. A little wall. There's some pizza back there. Um, pizza. So, so many pizza. I want to get something to drink. That's what's in, that's what's inside this box. As you can see, the, the actual working functioning part is actually very small. But I I want space for exp expandability. I want it to fit in the. the Cable management is very good, by the way. Yeah, that's uh, that's what matters. Yeah. Well, you know, I. I Zip ties, you know, you get those zip ties and you make things. Wait, I want to make sure zip ties? You, didn't, you didn't put that in the bomb. Yeah, I, uh, I think I think they were lying. And, yeah, you know, I, I, I thrift I, store zip ties. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I might have, they might be twisty ties. They might have been the twisty ties that came with the power supply. Um, okay, so now the now the box is built. So now let's actually get into the o, OS Manjaro stuff. So why Manjaro? I mentioned Steam OS earlier, it's based on Debian. In fact, Valve continues to recommend, when you install Steam, they recommend Ubuntu. Um, however, I found that, that support was very lacking in Ubuntu for the very newest hardware, um, which is, at the time, this was built, um, the, that motherboard and CPU had been out for like six weeks. Um, and the GPU was like three, or four. 419 or whatever. So major problems. Yes, 419 is the first kernel with it built in. I do mention that on the list. That's long term. So Rich already knows. Yeah, I have. I, 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 I move. What's that? Oh. 20 minutes. Oh, oh 20 minutes. That I, my, oh, yeah, that's what you're giving. Yeah, I see, there's a clock there. I can see. So okay. I like Ubuntu. I still run it on a lot of boxes. But for this box, I had to put Manjaro in. For those who don't know, which is very few in this room, Manjaro is a rolling release distro based on Arch. Uh, rolling release means that supposedly they have, did I mention that on a later slide? Yeah, I have it there. So I'll talk about what Manjaro is on a later slide. What do I did here? This is, this, is one for, this is one for the newbies. I downloaded the ISO image, I made a boot USB. I choose a desktop. Those who have been paying attention will see that I'm on KDE. This is very much a matter of personal preference. Again, I want to be vendor apps. neutral. I don't care if you use uh, GNOME or, or My three gaps. X, X to C, which looks like ass. Um, <laughs> I use KDE, but you know what? Other people swear by these that shows like Manjaro. Rim, bro. I think standard Manjaro is actually XFCE, so whatever. Um, GNOME is actually becoming more popular and is officially supported. And then if you don't like any of these, Manjaro, like Ubuntu, is very well known for having just about every desktop in existence. There is a Manjaro, even if it's not officially supported, someone in the community is supporting. We got Budgie, which I love from Solus. Cinnamon from hey, Linux Cinnamon. Mint. Cinnamon from Linux Mint, which is pretty good. Uh, Deepin, which is China. Um, and really, I, I won't, that's a whole other, uh, I tried it. I tried all of these. I tried every single one of these. And then we even have super old school, ultra minimalist, like awesome in i3. Woo. If you really, if you really like to, you know, it, they're, they're, you, they all work. They all work um, with varying levels of, uh, of uh, annoyance. They're, they're, they were all pretty good. Um, that you should, these, 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 these one, you, you should have another plug talk just on, just on all these desktops. Um, USB booting and UEFI nonsense. So every single motherboard in existence has a different escape okay. sequence to get out of boot. Um, ASRock, ASRock wants F11. What the hell? I have no idea. Every single motherboard is a different damn bleed. All right, sometimes RTFM helps. 
Uh, okay, you're like you're playing the piano. Sometimes our TFM helps, other times the manual is just like, what? You want to get into BIOS? Why would you want to do that? Why? And then you have to Google it. Um, so it's F11. Never have I had another you know, one. Windows out of the box. When you go I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. You know. um, Manjaro Live Environment, you know, move quickly to install because we all know how to install Linux in this sort. Depending on how fast your storage, your storage is across your USB drive, USB port, it, the install is, is mind bogglingly fast, like five to 10 minutes, you're done. Uh, Manjaro, that helps that Manjaro's installer is very easy. You get very few questions. The most complete, complicated step is drive partitioning. I hate dual booting. I just use the entire drive, except all the defaults and use LVM. This is not a production box. I'm not encrypting with CryptFS or Luke's or whatever the hell. Just LVM in case I ever want to add storage. Well, this is where it's to steal your save game. Yeah, you steal my save game, but they're all in the cloud, Steam Cloud. <laughs> Do keep an eye on swap space. Manjaro is not the worst. Other distros are worse. We want to take up half our game hard drive for swap. Just turn it off. You know, yeah, you just turn it, you just turn it off. You keep an eye on it. I mean, it's, it's, if you accept all defaults and you change nothing, you will get a swap partition. I, I, I think it's they default to one times RAM, which is you need it for suspend. Yeah, for, I, I guess. Yeah, okay. Which, yeah, yeah, all right. Thank you, Rich. But how often are you suspending early? Yeah, it's a gaming game. That's why they do it. Yeah, but yeah. that's why they do it. Yeah, that's why they do it. Okay, so Manjaro is descended from Arch. It uses Pac-Man instead of Act or Yum, which is now DNF uh, in Fedora and uh, CentOS or Red Hat. Um, every time I install Manjaro or Arch or Antergos or any Arch, I always go to the command line. The very first thing I do is sudo pacman-syyu. And guess what? I probably have a massive freaking patch on here. Hunter2 is your password? Hunter2. Yeah, you, he's sniffing. He's busy sniffing my password right now, <laughs> and it's going. It's going a because I did Y twice. It's going and getting. Oh, I must have. Did I patch it this morning? Oh, that's no fun. What's the extra one? Way to uh, go! An arch guy that's actually passed. Uh, I'm, 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 what kernel am I? No, I'm not on the most. I'm on five. On four. I'm, on, I'm on five one. They have a five. They have a five. They have a five one kernel out. I'm on five thirteen. Eight ten. My kernel's from Friday. Thanks, man, Jarrow. All right. So pseudo Pacman S Y Y U. The command flags break down. This is see. I told you we get to the good stuff with ten minutes, fifteen minutes left. Uh, capital S for sync with the re repository. Why, why? You always get the newest package list from the primary mirror and not Iran. Um, literally, the Islamic Republic of Iran, which uh, they, there is a mirror there, and I did get my package list from there one time. I'm sure it's um, What's that? I'm sure it's fine. Why? Why would you because do I don't know. That was the lowest latency or whatever. I did not ask That's for it. It so just gave weird. me my package list from Iran. I don't know. Now you're on the watch list. So now I'm on a list. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this is why I do. Why well, now you're, I'm here. You're, you're, you're on, on a list, list again because you're already running Linux. So. I'm already on the list. Yeah. So so why why means I always get the newest list from the primary mirror. If you just do a single why, you're gonna get whatever mirror comes back to you first. I learned something. Yeah, so that's why I do YY. Why. Okay, so I was like, no more, no more package lists from my hand. And then you, you to do an upgrade. So it's basically this command for those who speak Debian or Ubuntu. sudo pacman syyu is the exact same thing as sudo apt up sudo apt y update and 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 ampersand ampersand sudo apt y upgrade. So you can type all that out in Debian or Ubuntu, or you can type those 16 characters in Manjaro or Arch or any other Arch family. There, they do these. They do more or less the exact same thing. That's the first thing I always do, and it always, always, always has a, a, a monstrous amount of packages. Even if you got the the boot USB, if you got it the day after, it it, it you're, you, it's still gonna there's still gonna be stuff. So besides the full system upgrade, the next thing I do is I always put my favorite utilities in after that. Um, big fan of HTOP instead of TOP. NCDU to keep an eye on your, what's that? ATOP. ATOP, okay. I'll try ATOP sometime, Rich. You should. Um, NCDU to check my disk usage oh, from the command line. TMUX because 
it's better than screen and map because because OMG hacks. And then TeamSpeak 3 for um, you know for if you're going to do gaming, you do any multiplayer gaming, people like they get on a voice chat. And TeamSpeak is is there's Mumble, and I don't know about Discord. I think Discord just runs in a browser, so who cares? But TeamSpeak 3 is, is pretty cool, so I still use that uh, for for when I for when I do online multiplayer games. Uh, Manjaro has a whole bunch of GUI-based graphical pa package managers. If you don't want to do Pac-Man, you know, just like Ubuntu has, uh, or Ubuntu and Debian has Synaptic, we've got Pamac and Octopi, Pamac for GTK desktops, Octopi for me over on KDE and, and Qt. Uh, they work, again, yeah, they're just like Synaptic or, or DNF Jagora over on Fedora. Uh, okay, here's where we get to, with 10 minutes left, the Arch user repository is like Ubuntu PPAs, but way more than that. Um, it's a framework for installing Linux software outside of the OS repo. So if anyone's done Ubuntu PPAs, it's like that, but on a massive amount of steroids. Manjaro is a descendant of Arch Linux. Manjaro users have access to the Arch user repository. Um, I find it easier to use than PPAs because everything is in one spot instead of having to type in. Yes. Instead of having to type in or go search around on Google how do I install this program? Oh, it's in a PPA. Well, you have to add that PPA into it and then and then do sudo apt update, sudo apt install. And you have to reset them every time you update, update Ubuntu, you have to reset them. Yeah, so this is completely, like, I don't say completely, it's completely trouble free. It's not, but it's different. It's different in a good, is different. Are you getting your Iranian PPAs? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, the, no, that was the mirror, that was the, that was the mirror, that, that was the OS, the OS yeah, itself. I, is hosted over is, is over there. Um, I'm sure it's fine. It was just I don't know why I got it. It was like I said, it was they they, they find everything. Everything so is it's fine. Yeah. It's legit. I know, but I always want the the, new, the newest list of mirrors, so that's why I do Y choice. So AUR can be a bit intimidating. There are thousands of packages and maintainers. Some people update their packages constantly. Other people other people don't do it at all. Some AUR packages are installed as binaries, others are built from source. There's even proprietary software in it, some of it with, some of it with free as in beer, some of it licenses, some of it is shareware where they ask you for, to give them money or otherwise they shut it off. It's all there. If it runs and it's stable and it's not malware, they will, they, it will go up in the AUR. Uh, every package has a PKG build file, and it's a build script. And you can browse the PKG build file. I recommend you do it because, or the first few times until you find packages that you really like. And the more you look at it, the more it starts to make sense. This is a PKG build script. Uh, this is for anti-micro. I'll get into anti-micro if we have time. Anti-micro allows you to emulate keyboard and mouse on a console controller. It was written eight or nine years ago by some random dude uh, who, who stopped writing software many years ago. Someone who really liked to code now maintains it as a package in a Arch user repository. There has not been an Ubuntu PPA since Ubuntu 16 that has this package, so it doesn't run properly on newer Ubuntu versions. Uh, Fedora, I think, has it, uh, and it's, I don't know, I think this might be um, an Arch repackaging of Fedora's version of it. Um, but it's hard to see because of the resolution of the monitor, but it's, it's, it, is, it is automatically running that script when I do, when I, when I install it from the AUR, it automatically compiles, links, builds it, and installs the executable, even puts it in my menus. Um, Which one does the rootkit? What's that? Yeah, no, you look at it, it's, it's pulling it, you can see where it's pulling from upstream, it's pulling it right from GitHub. So, um, Same question. Yeah, what's that? Nope. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Fake comments. All right. So why should I care about freedom. why should I care about PKG build files? I just want to run my damn game. Well, there are inline fixes if something doesn't install right. You can edit the PKG build file inline. Also, security reasons, as you said, there could be. There's the rootkit. You can look look at the PKG build file before you run the code. Um, you can also fork in your own tweaks and make your own package, create your own account, and be, become your own maintainer. It's wild west. Anything goes. To install from the AUR, um, I most people use 
AUR helpers. There was one called Yaourt that if you look on Google, how do I use AUR? Everyone says use Yaourt. Don't use it, it's going away. Yeah. It's not being maintained anymore. You must use new ones. Trizen, I know Chris likes Trizen. Yay. Is PKUR. Good. What's that? I'm on PKUR. You're on you're on Pycar now? Yeah. Yeah, so so I like I like Pycar as well. Um, but there as long as you're not using Yaourt, don't use Yaourt. Um, not that that means anything to people who haven't used Archer Manjaro, but you'll so see bad. guides telling you to use it, and don't use so it. Bad. So bad. Uh, if you don't want to do any command line stuff, you want to do this through the GUI. If you install XFCE or GNOME, you that actually works really well. Pamac. Pamac, you like using Pamac? I've used it. It works really well. Yeah, so Pamac know. is, again, that's like Synaptic Package yeah. Manager, and you just check the box that says use AUR, make those packages show up, look what you need, put it, put it on there, and, and run it. Okay, so I currently have three AUR utilities installed on this box right here. I have the Phronix test suite, I have crossover, and I have anti-micro Phronix test, test suite. I'll just show this really quick. I, I missed the bit. Can we start over? <laughs> I don't know. But, but thank you for the... Thank you for the... This is my burn-in tool. All purpose, it does everything. So I kind of... Kind of I think the take home is he knows, he's old enough to know what a 2600 is. Yeah. So I use this for diagnostics, hardware diagnostics and burning. What's it called again? Uh, Pharonix Test Suite. Okay. Yeah. I use that, and that's for every distro has it. Just yeah. for Arch of Manjaro, you have to install it from the from the AUR. Yeah. Um, I think uh, 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 in, in CentOS it's in Apple. And then in uh, in Debian in Debian Ubuntu they in Ubuntu they have a really old version, so you should just go to the Pharonix website and just download the dev file. Again, we have AUR. We don't need to go to his his damn website. We just install through the AUR. Right. Crossover is commercial support wine. Yes, I pay for commercial support of wine. We probably don't have time to, for me to explain wine in the last few minutes. Anti micro I explained earlier. I can emulate keyboard and mouse on a console controller. Very weird uh, thing that you can do, but there are some cases where I just don't feel like I wanna, you know, there are some games where you just need one or two keyboard presses and the rest can be done with a with a PC controller or, or, or a game pad, except for just one or two. Like a lot of time you have to hit like the escape key or something like that, you have that running and it works quite well. <clears throat> so I use Veronix for testing burn-in for CPU and GPU. I run it with everything full set full tilt overnight make sure nothing crashes. Maybe I want to do some overclocking. Maybe people still overclock. That's sort of a computer game of its own. Um, what is the CPU? It is, it is. They're, they have competitions and awards and everything. What's, C, what's our CPU temperature? What GPU driver are we using? You saw it, it all comes in that, in that diagnostic. Um, so it's fun as installing Arch? Yeah, it, it's, I, it's more fun. Uh, so historically, I have five minutes, I gotta, I gotta move here. Historically, the proprietary Linux drivers provided by GPU vendors were better than the open source. That is no longer the case. This is why I'm going with AMD. The open source drivers for AMD Radeon are better than the proprietary drivers. 90% of the time, the only time that AMD's proprietary video card drivers are better is for the very newest AAA games running Vulkan. There's about 10 of them. And the other 300 computer games that run on Linux use the open source drivers. Um, Manjaro was really good about giving you really current drivers right out of the box. I think anyone who's ever gamed on Windows knows how miserable it is installing uh, uh, GeForce drivers, Cattle drivers, keeping them up to date, rolling them back, oh, using the newer versions. It's, it's all in kernel. Yeah, but in, in, on the Linux side, it is, I'm telling you the, the, the Windows side. Um, and even even in other version in other distros of Linux, the Nvidia, pr NVIDIA proprietary drivers. Uh, not a fan, but here it's AMD drivers. It's they're in the they're they're open source drivers that come out of Manjaro. Everything works. But do you get better performance out of the um, the AMD drivers using the open source ones or the NVIDIA drivers using? The well, that gets into an AMD versus an NVIDIA debate, and I want to be under neutral. But if you all, if you have AMD, if you have AMD graphics, use the open source drivers. That's what I'm saying today. This, I could do this presentation again next year. I could be saying it. And I, I want to run CUDA. So you want to run? Okay, well, oh. CUDA. That's NVIDIA. So 
Uh, no, it does You can that we can talk about. You do can, not you yeah. No, you can break. That is a different presentation, and, and I'm sure a very interesting yeah. one. You got to use the NVIDIA drivers for CUDA. Um, so moving along, past the drivers, setting up Steam. Manjaro has Steam in the distro. It's on. It's in the boot media. You don't even have to go to Valve. Some people don't like that. Some people are like, why are they taking up all the space on my on my boot ISO with with Steam? They want the system to be as they want, they want people to get up and running quickly. Install Steam, get your activation key, use Steam Cloud to sync up your save games, re-download all your games, don't try and move them over from uh, external hard drive. I tried it, it was a bad idea. Controllers, PS3 controllers, Xbox 360 controllers, PS4 works but the batteries suck. Steam controllers are good too. Xbox One controllers do not work. VR headsets, good luck. <laughs> um, they're out there and they're they're trying. They're trying really hard. They're not there yet. Maybe I in another, haven't tried them. Maybe in another year or two. <laughs> Non-native gaming almost done. I have like two or three slides left. Uh, wine. Wine is our favorite. Chris Vector and that is not a con emulator. It's not a container either. I've heard some people say, "Hey, wine. It's just like Docker." No, it's not like Docker. It is a compatibility layer that translates API calls. From one OS to another, most of the time, it's translating DirectX into OpenGL. Well, now it's doing DirectX <coughs> to Vulkan. Um, there are other things that Wine does, but for our for our purposes, you know, Wine has been around for decades. Now there's a fork of it called Proton. That's part of Steam now. So when you play Steam games that they call Steam Play, it uses Proton, and that is Wine, and they forked Wine, they took the source code, Wine is open source software. They took it, they built Proton, <coughs> and that's letting new, like there's a new Doom, the Doom reboot, Doom yeah. 4. I gotta say Doom 4, Doom, it's Doom 4 to me. To me it's Doom 4, that runs on uh, Proton, but it's right in Steam, you don't have to install, you don't have to install Wine. All right, so last couple slides. <clears throat> Future considerations. Steam is not open source software. I think everybody knows this by now. It may not be with us forever. It could be vulnerable to competition and driven out of business. Valve could be driven out of business any day now by Google Stadia. Epic has an online games platform. Good old games out of Poland. Other people, they could have Linux support pulled at any time. Do not put all your eggs in the Steam basket, as nice as Manjaro is. Chris can probably tell you a great deal about Lutris. Yep. It is a very serious and very good attempt at an open source substitute for Steam that puts all your games in one, in one spot. It looks very promising. I just started playing around with it. You see it might get my Ubuntu screenshot. Ooh, ooh, secret, dirty secret there. But, uh, you know, I don't, again, I have more than one gaming box. It has support for a whole bunch of AAA games. The biggest one I've seen is Overwatch. It makes Installing and setting up and playing Overwatch super easy using DXDK, which is Vulkan, except Vulkan for Linux, a, an implementation of the Vulkan API, which Overwatch relies on, which is why, I don't know, I, guess one, I, don't, I don't know if that's why Overwatch is so popular, but I guess they have, it, it, it runs on a lot of different platforms because it uses Vulkan. And then I have Crossover, which we probably don't have time to get into, but that's what I use to play old stuff, so pre- um, pre Steam Play wine gaming, so World of Warcraft runs well on it, Skyrim, and my current MMO of choice, Guild Wars 2, because there's no, it's an old MMO, it's been out for like six or seven years, there's no subscription fee because I'm done with subscription MMOs. There's Lutris, again, it looks like Steam, except it's, you know, it wants to be open source, and you can still pay, you, you know, you still, it's still proprietary software. It's just, Steam as a platform for PC gaming as your hub for PC gaming. They're open sourcing. They're open sourcing that, which is very nice. Um, so yeah, any time left for a demo? No, we're we're out of time. Go ahead. You, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, I, we're over by a couple minutes. I did want to talk about troubleshooting issues and regressions. You heard was it Rich who said this box will not run on any Linux kernel pre 4.18. The CPU GPU combo will not. You will get a kernel panic. Uh, this this hardware is so new it just won't run on Even the early, early 418. Yes, were 418. Famous. There were patches, so like four the early 418 patches 
were, were no go. Do you have this processor? I do. Yes. I use it for my hand box, and I yeah. was running from the very beginning. Right. Holy cow! It was All kernels before that, and then even some of the early 14s. It's, it's crazy to even 419, 420, and then obviously I'm running 5.5.0. Um, that was. It took me a little while to find that out. I'm like, what? That's one of the main reasons I had to go with Manjaro on this box. No one else had. Uh, I believe it was at the time uh, 419. No one else had 419. Uh, at the time, I'm sure. Was that up to yet? Okay, roll your own kernel. Do gentle. I was to say, we don't build kernels anymore. Anyway? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, motherboard, uh, U UFI, the boot menu, it was stupid. It really pissed me off. Um, I had some, Steam had some issues with big picture mode, which is, makes it like a, makes it seem like a console. Um, that crashed a bunch of times. Uh, I don't know, Valve, there's, op there were open bug reports where they did nothing. And then the other one is there have been some OS regressions when I do Manjaro patches. Um, the screensaver got turned back on after I disabled it because why do I want a screensaver kick in while I'm, while I'm on, a, on a game? Right. Uh, OpenGL got ruined uh, by huh. an update. Bluetooth got ruined uh, less than a week ago. Um, all of them had workarounds or fixes documented in the Manjaro forums. They all took me about an hour or two to fix. I did not, get, and that's at my current skill level, which I would rate it intermediate, and I would call, call myself an expert. High intermediate, not quite expert yet. That would be the advantage of a bunch of LTS. Yeah, I did not, have, yeah, but it won't run on this. Well, run so on LTS is right. a kernel. Okay, or you have to roll my own kernel, right? So, so, with, so I did not actually have to open up or post in the Manjaro forums. I just Googled, or just did a search in the Manjaro forums, saw everyone else was running into the same issues. Fixes or fixes or workarounds were already in place, and I got back to a working baseline. The Bluetooth one was super annoying because that's what this PS3 controller <coughs> runs off of. So I actually had to, I actually had to roll back the kernel for that. So I want 5019 instead of 5020. Um, all right, that's it. That's the end. Any questions or feedback? Was this too long? I got it done yeah, in about an hour, five minutes. Yeah, with all I, the heckling? Yeah, I, with, with heckling. No, no, I, I two comments. I, I can, I would love to get some of the demo in there because we don't, we, we can post this, not post it. I can give you the video if you want to review it for yourself. Um, it's your call. Um, I but I say, I would say, go ahead and do the demo. Do five minutes a minute. uh, yeah. Well, I, I do my a game I'm actually good at because I really suck at a lot of these games. But um, well, that's what we want to see. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we want to see you sucking at yeah, you know, exactly. Another, another tip: the slides, you know, for future reference for people looking at them after the fact, if you just spell out more exactly what to do, that will help. Yeah, I, all the arch and install stuff I would remove. In all honesty, yeah. If, yeah. What I all mean, the all the what all, all the all the, the yeah. Linux install stuff I would yeah. wouldn't bother. I would, but I that's would. for again, it's for a different. It's for. <clears throat> Even even for us, uh, I would even. say I, I would say uh, you know look at look at the information that you have, condense it to a page. I used Manjaro, I updated as soon as I built it. Like the build stuff is great, it's fantastic. The update information, like I, I update, I do this, like that's something that you could you could do um, a page on, and, cool. then, and then also talk about your test suite and everything, how you got that, and then okay. that way you can move on. Right. You know, you actually want to run. A little under. Like yeah. You want to be like 45, 40 minutes, and then that gives you 10 minutes or so to actually have your demo. And, and I was going to say, you can put those at the end. So if you like, if you want to get deeper into the actual install build, if yeah. it moves very quick because there's no questions and no heckling and all that other stuff, you've got some extra time to hit the, you know, as hey. Jeff would say, the bonus slides. You call them bonus slides. The yeah. bonus slides. Yeah, yeah bonus you. slides. So if you're there and you talk really fast and you're at 35 minutes and you've given your demo, you're like, oh, hey, I have this slide to show you guys. And you can click through a few more extra yeah. slides. Mm -hmm. But realistically, you want to try and time it to be exactly 40 minutes because that gives time for people like me and Keith who are heckling you like, constantly. To well, that wasn't me. That was you and Rich. Yeah. <laughs> Rich. Rich was playing well tonight. That's fine. Yeah. What were you going to say, Rich? No, I was just saying, you are right that this is like three talks in one. It's three talks on one, and I, but again, it's for more, um, again, I have, this, this was, this was written with a different audience in mind, but I definitely like all the feedback on it. So, I don't have a huge amount of games, again, I'm doing more like the Metroidvania games, I don't have, notice I don't have Doom installed on this, because I have Doom on the Tower PC. Mm -hmm. This, I mainly have my platforming games, stuff with a little bit lighter demand on graphics. 
Again, as you can see, I have probably more, more hours in this game than you're playing Portal on this. Yeah, what's that? Uh, portal, portal would run, anything from Orange Pop Zero would run phenomenally well on this machine. It, it's um, really surprising to me just how well Steam and Valve have actually like made things run. I, I've run things like on my on, on right. this. Hit the PlayStation button to turn. That's the, that's because I didn't want Microsoft to take thirty percent of the revenue. <laughs> that, that's why they did all this. <clears throat> yeah. Well, also, Gaben hate, hates uh, Windows Eight. <laughs> So this is like your dad, and you have to, I don't know, smite your foes. Um, uh, this is like story. We don't need story. We just so you're just kind of running around and looting it. It's got. You can have an online map that you can do stuff here, and I have a bunch of upgradable weapons that you can level up. Um, but you can see I have a health bar in the lower left corner, and the object is to not die and find out who is responsible for your execution. Because you're, you're like an undead. Um, it's like quite scary. Yeah, it's, it's pretty grim, actually. This, is, this one's here as well. So what is the objective of this? You just run around and run around, around, around and kill things. 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 <laughs> run around and kill things. It's it's people well, speed run this. People can beat this whole entire game in like twenty minutes. Oh, it looks like it was. Well, I mean, so it's all would, all this stuff is all procedurally generated. What I would recommend doing also is having the FPS counter enabled for your overlay. Yeah, see, yeah, I'll, yeah. show people how good it looks. Like you've got like I would I would focus on like. You know, getting the settings absolutely like the best they can be, like it looks good. Well, this is, well. You can see it has got sort of like the 8 bit, 16 bit yeah, yeah. going, so this is always going to run like whatever, you know, like 60 FPS or whatever. Sure. I'm just saying, I mean, show that to them so they can see that, you know. I but, uh, overkill, overkill the game, right? So I play, I play WoW with, uh, with uh, Luther Song, and I'm getting you know, 90 FPS in game. In the, the you know. You know what? So, you know, Luther is actually really, is, is really, really. Yeah, we definitely, we may need the, I don't know if, how, what the interest would be in another. So now you, you get these little cells and you spend them. And this is a core mechanic of any roguevania or roguelike game. You get money and you spend these. Now these are permanent. I could die and the game could end and I would start a new game and I would still have these upgrades. So that's sort of like a Dark Souls or... Did Dark Souls start that? I don't know who's... Yeah, or Rogue Legacy. You get... Regardless of whether I actually win this game or not, I'd spend money to permanently buff up. Even after I die, I start the game over. My subsequent character gets those gets those upgrades permanently. What's that? The point It's I, are, are you? Trying? That's a really old classic. Yeah, Planescape Torment. Yeah, I I I know they they were trying to include it. This is. I feel like there are some superficial similarities, but this is not obviously not a DMV game. This seems like kind of a weird platformer version of of that. Uh, yeah, well, they call it a roguelike, so yeah. so it's it's I would say a very distant descendant of that. Oh, sure. What, what is it called again? But uh, like, dead cells. But dead there's the maze, and there's these little shops where you can get better stuff. And, uh, there's definitely similarities. Have you used the Xbox 2 controller? Xbox One controller, I mean? Uh, Xbox One controllers have... Why, is that, is that working now? I don't know, I'm, I'm asking you if you... Yeah, Xbox One controllers are, have no issues, uh, or have no issues with this. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Xbox 360, on the other hand, is in the kernel. Would you use a Steam controller instead? 
I don't. I find that control to be utter madness. But um, other people swear by them. I believe Rich has one like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it works, work. again, it works flawlessly. There are zero issues with the steam controller. I just, I just don't like the grip on. What you do this for another group, you might want to turn the volume down. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 So, All right. Well, is anybody interested in seeing the hardware? If you mind opening it up, or that's why. Can you actually see it? I thought it was invisible. All right. Oh wait, you know what? So here, before oh. we before we wrap up here, we do tend to go to the office afterwards. Uh, I don't know that I'll be able to attend, yeah. but if you'd like to go, please. Can you turn um, check your back on so I can oh, sit down and manage it. Sure. I guess. I, I haven't been since. I've met in a place. I mean, I guess you want to shut your computer down safely. Adam, that was good, man. We went, yeah, we went was very good. Yeah. Sorry for the heckles, but you need them. You can actually, like, you know.